So in this session, we'll be looking at uh, keeping children healthy, uh, the journey from adolescence to motherhood. Uh, let me start with you, Ms. Aditi Das Raut. Uh, if I can ask you to outline for our audience here the ministry's work, what is the reason for focusing on adolescent girls, pre-adolescents, et cetera? Uh, because that's not a large focus, particularly for poorer, more rural parts of India. Why is the ministry taken uh, a great amount of interest and initiative in uh, adolescents and pre-adolescents? To my mind, I think uh, one of the prime objectives of the Ministry of Women and Child Development has been to address uh, gaps in state action for the development of women, children, as well as adolescent girls. Uh, malnutrition, as we all know, is a challenge which is intergenerational. Uh, and anemic women is, woman is more likely to give birth to a low weight baby or a weak infant, which in turn increases the risk of uh, childhood wasting, uh, underweight prevalence, and a host of other metabolic disorders. Now to address this very challenge of malnutrition, the government has focused on a scheme for adolescent girls, which is popularly known by its acronym SAG. Uh, now, this scheme is presently being uh, implemented across all aspirational districts in the country, as uh, well as in the northeastern uh, regions. And it, for the first time, and this is how it is different from an earlier scheme which was then in operation, for the first time, this scheme is focusing on adolescent girls in the age bracket of 14 to 18 years, because it is precisely this bracket of girls who are outside the ambit of the midday meal, meal program. Uh, the SAG program is one of the three important constituents of Portion 2.0. The other two being uh, the, the Anganwadi Services Scheme, which covers a network of almost 14 lakh Anganwadi centers across the country, uh, as well as the Portion Abhiyan, which is an important program for behavior change communication. Uh, now, Portion uh, 2.0 essentially seeks to optimize the content as well as delivery of supplementary nutrition through diet diversification and micronutrient focus. And this is especially true for adolescent girls. Now, at the Anganwadi platform, the adolescent girl is provided with supplementary nutrition in the form of take-home ration, which is, I would like to mention for the benefit of this audience, which is not raw ration. Take-home ration is processed, and it is a dry kind of food which can be stored and consumed over a period of time. Now, uh, these nutritional norms were recently revised uh, and notified on the 25th of January in uh, 2023 by an interministerial committee to make the norms more comprehensive in terms of nutritional standards. Now, these norms have brought about two very important changes. The first change is uh, that the norms have brought about a more balanced formulation in terms of both quality as well as quantity of uh, supplementary nutrition, moving away from a calorie-focused diet. Mm. So the food baskets have actually integrated a lot of essential, uh, seven, in fact, seven key essential micronutrients, and uh, this is something which is a very important change, along with energy as well as uh, protein. Okay. Secondly, these norms have been made age-specific as well as beneficiary-specific to because it rightly recognizes the nutritional needs of different age groups as well as beneficiary categories, including adolescent girls. Now, besides these, I would like to point out that uh, under the Portion 2 program, uh, fortified rice is being uh, given to all Anganwadi centers, including for adolescent girls. And uh, in the last uh, couple of years, as much as 12 lakh metric tons of fortified rice have, has been given. All right. Millets is also being integrated, and uh, this is being done in a very big way because we want to encourage uh, people to recognize the health benefits of millets. And besides that, portion vaticas have been planted at or near Anganwadi centers, almost 6.24 lakhs, because this is how you can easily pass on the benefits of locally grown produce to women, children, as well as adolescent girls. Sure and retrofit them as well with poultry units wherever applicable. So, uh, on that note, let me ask Nina ji, because you're an expert on nutrition. Um, particularly for adolescents and pre-adolescent uh, girls, uh, nutrition is absolutely essential to health, but the challenge is how do you make the diet localized, 
Uh, how is it part of the existing social and cultural milieu? How is it diversified and balanced? Uh, because at the end of the day, nutrition is, is the most single biggest thing, particularly in pre-adolescent uh, kids. Uh, single biggest challenge, I would say, that we need to address. So how does one keep this in mind? And, and you know, if you could underline the importance of nutrition, particularly in this age group of children. Uh, you know, nutrition is very important at every age and particularly, uh, school, you know, children who are growing. So, a pre-adolescent and adolescent age group, the, you know, is also the second growth spot. You know, where whatever, uh, you know, growth could not, in case it could not happen during the first growth spot can be made up. So, it is extremely important that we use local diets, you know. Uh, so already ministry has taken up initiative of using uh, uh, you know uh, millets of having uh, ocean vaticas to use dietary di increased dietary diversity so when we say diet di diverse diet it should include all the food groups so ek aam bhasha mein agar hame kisi ko samjhana hai ki balanced uh, nutritious local diet kya hai to it should have at least, you know, may, three major food groups, I mean, in the whole day, the five food groups, but in the, uh, each meal, each main meal, it should have some cereal, some um, protein, which could come from pulse or milk or from non-vegetarian food in case it is acceptable. And definitely half of it has to be vegetables and fruits. So <laughs> NIN, which is a National Institute of Nutrition, also gives us a model of thali, where we say, where we are lacking is, despite producing so many fruits and vegetables, despite being a vegetarian country, we are not consuming enough, you know, vegetables and fruits. They are going waste. So the initiative to have local production to incorporate these is very important. So if we fal sabzi, koi protein yukta aahar, or of course little amount of fat to cook the food and sugar and all, agar ek local diet based on the local practices, if we can incorporate in the right amounts for the children, it is extremely important. So that's why our midday meal program, uh, which is PM portion now, and our, uh, you know, school uh, scheme for adolescent girls should incorporate these foods. And we've always been against, uh, you know, pro processed, ultra processed foods, correct, so correct. to say. So yeah. that is extremely important, but important is also to make sure that they eat enough number of times and in the right quantities and avoid uh, ultra processed foods. I'll come to ultra processed fo foods in just a moment because that is of course a, a huge problem particularly in urban areas with you know middle class and upper middle class kids but uh, Dr. Sachdeva as a practicing pediatrician when you see adolescent girls, pre-adolescent girls and their mothers uh, the aspect of nutrition perhaps is not something that they give so much importance to so how do you explain to them, you know, the importance of nutrition at an adolescent stage, uh, what kind of bearing it can have in later stages in life, particularly for young girls? So if you could explain that to our audience. Nutrition is not all about undernutrition, which we evaluate from a body size, which is a very, very poor indicator of how much nutrition we have. So yes, over the years, the knowledge of the adolescents has improved on nutrition, but a lot needs to be done as yet. And what is really important is that the adolescent girls and boys also are the future parents. Yeah. And if a woman does not attain her best physical capacity, she is not likely to deliver a progeny who is going to follow a healthy trajectory throughout the life. We generally ignore the boys, but science has shown that the paternal effect on the chromosomes also occur. So it has to be imbibed in them, and it's not only about diet, it's about the other habits that they pick up in adolescence, smoking, alcohol, tobacco, uh, drugs, or socioeconomic, and lack of physical activity is another thing. So. We have to tailor, and I do try to tailor according to the context of the parent of what needs to be done to get into the optimal state. Uh, I want to ask Aditi ji about, you know, let's move on from nutrition because we have to focus on holistic development that includes mental well-being, physical well-being. Uh, what is the ministry doing uh, to sort of attain this goal? 
this holistic development of young uh, children, whether they are adolescents or pre-adolescents? I think the ministry has uh, worked on several different themes as well as activities for the benefit of adolescent girls. And I think the most important here would be our collaboration with Ayush in the, in the domain of wellness. And this has been a highlight under various portion Abhiyan programs. So uh, there are four important uh, joint protocols which have been worked out uh, for beneficiaries at the Anganwadi centers, including a yoga module exclusively for adolescent girls. Uh, besides this, I think uh, the Anganwadi worker, one of our core mandates is uh, to instruct uh, beneficiaries, including adolescent girls, on nutrition as well as health education. And uh, in this regard, uh, there are various sensitization programs which take place. One of them uh, is on, uh, is on uh, uh, hygiene, which includes menstrual hygiene, uh, as well as wash. Uh, now, uh, there is a fixed monthly day at the Anganwadi Center when the sensitization programs take place uh, in collaboration with the ASHA worker. But uh, there are also, to complement this activity, there are also home-based sessions which are carried out, especially for adolescent girls as well as their influences in the family who are unable to attend these programs. So I think uh, these are some of the key initiatives. But uh, here I'd like to mention that uh, anemia is a widely prevalent disorder in adolescent girls as well as women. And the ministry has collaborated with Ayush to propagate uh, some of the traditional uh, interventions. Uh, one of them is Draksha Vali, which has uh, proved to be extremely successful in pilot projects in Karnataka as well as in Gujarat. So this is being scaled up. But what is important is that for the first time, this is going to be an evidence-based approach, okay. wherein we can integrate uh, the principles of traditional practices along with modern medicine. Uh, the ICMR is also collaborating with Ayush as well as the, with the Ministry of WCD to conduct empirical evidence, to generate empirical evidence as well as to conduct uh, various clinical trials. They are also working on a joint study to uh, understand PCOS in adolescent girls. Okay. Uh, Nina ji, talking about mental well-being and uh, how it's intrinsically linked to the adolescent years, uh, Dr. Sajdev also pointed out about, how, you know, Kids could get into bad practices, whether it is smoking, drinking, etc., bad company, uh, even dropouts. There is a large rate of dropouts at that, at that age. So how does one guard against all of these uh, social evils, as it were, particularly in this vulnerable group of uh, children, young children? I think uh, in the la last few years, Fit India movement and even the Prime Honorable Prime Minister asking sports persons to go and visit various schools and you know talk to the adolescents, these are the initiatives where we define for children what kind of habits to follow. The role of having counselors within the schools, setups, or community where they can approach and they can get the right guidance, the right direction is very important and needs to work upon that. Dr. Sachdev, I want to go back to uh, early stage development and uh, early stage nutrition. Uh, they say the first thousand days, which is about three years uh, or so, uh, is most critical. So from your practice, when you've seen individual cases where people don't give importance or they're either they not in a position to or they are simply unaware of uh, the importance of the first thousand days, uh, if you could share that with our, with our audience. First thousand days refers to the period from conception till the age of two years. And why is it important? Because it's the most vulnerable period. It's the fragile period right from a cell. You have a newborn. And any insult at this stage is likely to be very severe as compared to an older one. And not only severe, what we showed and the other cohorts have showed that it will have a profound lasting effect could have on the adult development of metabolic diseases, which Re Ms. Roth referred to. So what is important is to take care of the to-be mother. I would extend it before that. We talked about adolescent. As the mother should be as well prepared as it is. And now with the emergence or rapid nutrition transition of the obesity, which is coming up, one of our papers has been published in The Lancet today showing the double burden, the two Indias that yeah. I was talking about. And so you have to counsel them accordingly to be in the best physical state. Obesity in a mother will beget obesity in the child. Diabetes in a mother will get diabetes in a child. Similarly, an undermarriage mother will have. So it starts with the mother, wherein the, our gynecologist obstetrician's role starts. They have to advise them the optimal diet, 
more important, the physical activity and the bad habits and get the antenatal care done. Similarly, for the child which is the norm, which is the breastfeeding, you have to see how the child is growing or tracking. Tracking up the growth is bad. It could lead to disease later on in life, obesity, diabetes, hypertension, tracking down is right. So optimal dietary practices are important. Breastfeeding, which is there for exclusive for the six months and complementary diet. Aditi ji, we were talking about trackers. Now there is the portion tracker, there's the National Family Health Survey uh, 5. Uh, can you outline for our audience if there are instances, real-time instances of how malnutrition, stunting, etc. in children, both in rural and urban areas, have come down? Uh, so the portion tracker today is tracking more than 10 crore beneficiaries and uh, out of this we have almost 8.8 .8 crore uh, children. Uh, so if you see the NFHS survey, that had captured only about 6 lakh households. But the portion tracker on a monthly basis since the last one year is tracking more than 8 crore children. Now if you see the uh, stunting, uh, wasting prevalence under NFHS 5, it was as high as 19%. As per real-time data uh, tracked on the portion tracker, this has come down to only 6.5%, out of which severely acutely malnourished children account for just 2.5%. So these are real numbers from the ground, fed in by the states, by the Anganwadi workers, and this is not a one-time instance, this is something which is happening every month. So I think this is a big achievement and it's a step in the right direction. So the portion tracker is moving in the right direction and I think ministry has taken a lot of very positive steps. And this is all a collaborative effort. And I think the, in the days to come, I think we should have better results. All right, Nina ji, what can parents do to reduce dependence on processed food? Awareness definitely is very important. There are also steps perhaps at the policy level required, you know, to define FSSAI has taken certain steps to, but H HFSS foods, high fat, salt, sugar foods are still not defined. There are initiatives, you know, on FOPL, which is front of pack labeling on which the government is working. So, uh, you know, we are at least very clearly the consumer can be, can see, you know, amount of fat, amount of salt, amount of sugar that they are going to consume. Reading nutrition labels, you know, among uh, populations and particularly, again, among school children. It should, I feel, it should be part of NCRT curriculum to, you know, how to read food labels because they are, at the moment, the way they are, it is difficult for anyone to interpret them correctly. And creating this awareness, but biggest gatekeepers will be the people when they themselves understand and creating awareness and being able to read and decipher for themselves that how much, you know, one pack of biscuit or yeah. one pack of uh, chips. chips is going to contribute in terms of HFSS. And I think there is, uh, with the uh, upsurge in metabolic disorders, this is urgently required. Dr. Sachdev, you, you did uh, mention about uh, overnutrition and just to continue with this uh, thought about, you know, ultra-processed foods. If you go into a supermarket or if you go into a Kirana store, how do you read a label and particularly look out for high fat, high sugar, high salt uh, products so that they are aware what they are consuming? I don't think that these labels in the market will ever do the job of work. We need a simple system a traffic light system or a warning, something like the smoking for the tobacco, and that will also not kill it. Yeah. Because it's very seductive. The, it's meant to be seductive. The taste is very good. It's meant to overconsume yourself. So, in my humble opinion, labels, while they are essential, are no go. What's more important, it's, it's not only the calories and other things, it's <coughs> the processing itself, which adds many additives or other things which could be harmful to the body. Some have been linked to cancer or other. All right. Uh, Ma'am, you want to add something to that about reading labels or that's not a particularly useful way of uh, identifying? You know, I mean, uh, you know, though they are, like I said, there is a bombardment of advertisement and, you know, everywhere you are like getting this information. But to start with, if we at least, it is a right, you know, I, I look at it as a right, consumer. It is my right to know what is it that I'm consuming, you know, and uh, right. though 
I know that uh, sm even if we put a warning, cigarette smoking is injurious to health, then People cigarette still smokers consume it, yeah. continue to smoke and they have their own theories. But at the same time, you know, we do need, as a society, we need to, you know, uh, put it and make sure that consumers have the right to information and they can read, you know, these information and they have access to. And among those who want to exercise caution or they want to substitute, you know, the, the foods or limit the quantity. Sure. Because, I mean, look at it, the flip side of it, even though I'm a, you know, like nutritionist, but I would not like a life where there are no chocolates or no cakes <laughs> or no Nothing which is, you know, like if we say HFSS, a lot of food will going, is going to come under that. But it is the moderation, it is the amounts in which we consume, how frequently we consume, etc. So ultimately, it is the exercise has to be by an each individual, you know, who has to exercise. But All we right. have to start by giving them first the right information. All right, uh, Professor Bhatia, Ms. Aditi Das and uh, Dr. Sachdev, thank you very much for joining us on this special session on uh, Poshan Se Padaita.